like electric bikes now, huh? I know. Huh? There's so many different devices now, all over. I might get a little windy, guys. Bear with us. Oh yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> Can't take you anywhere. Hey, bro. How are you? Getting it done. I like that too. Is it weird that people still look at me? <laughs> this old guy is like, hey, this is Jake Adler. It's so oh, funny to know. So, you guys want to go surfing? Oh, look at that. I wish I had the money. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I bet you'd kill it. I got to All right, so here we are down in Venice Beach. More memories, right? I thought, I thought, whereas people used to, this is the bike path right here, and I used to live off the bike path when I stayed at Ed Carner's house out here. I mentioned that in the last video. Remember I talked about that? Yeah. But it's funny because when I, when I moved out to the west coast from massachusetts and for you guys that don't know i grew up in central massachusetts a place called sterling and i started training out of worcester mass you know i i kind of always wanted to be in california and i remember coming out after the 99 arnold and i shot pictures on the beach somewhere here with Purbinow and I was had the bike and everything it was like the classic photos the the black and whites that you see with my hands on my hips I looked like a statue out here and I was about 240 at the time I just had placed uh, third at the Ironman and fourth at the Arnold's and then I was going into the Olympia that September with high hopes of placing well and standing next to guys like Coleman who was the champ at that time he just won in 98 uh, but I was able to come out and I had made a plan based on Joe Weider was gonna give me a big raise to move to California. So I came out here and I had a friend from Boston, his name was Mike Cambra, and he was friends with Paul Dillette and a bunch of other guys. And he lived in a place called Aliso Viejo and he told me, don't move to Venice Beach. He said, it's not the best place for, for your mind and everything else, why don't you look down where I was, and that's in Aliso Viejo, and that's where I ended up actually securing, I, I put a, a deposit on an apartment in like March of 99, and I had the plan to compete in the Olympia, and then move around Thanksgiving of that year, so the end of 99, and that's exactly what I did. I actually spent Thanksgiving, I actually at a, at a dinner and I don't know if he'd remember this with Sean Ray actually at a woman's house that owned the Gold's Gym out there her name was Martha I think and in Trabuco Canyon there was a Gold's Gym and she owned that gym and, and you know I remember Sean Ray came to the dinner uh, we spent for Thanksgiving there Carrie and I and uh, so we um, we moved out there and uh, all right so sorry we got interrupted a little bit but so he told me to move down to Aliso Viejo Mike Canberra and uh you know, that's, we put a deposit on a place there, an apartment, uh, in that early season of 99. And then our plan was to, like I said, move in Thanksgiving, and we spent Thanksgiving there. We moved out just about that time, you know, shipped our vehicle there. And then, uh, you know, I was in Aliso Viejo, and I talk about, in other videos, you know, I, I rented a place for about six months. I had a lease about six months, and then I ended up buying a condo uh, with the money I won from the United Champions victory, which is now the New York Pro. So... Uh, I always talk about Venice and I'm like man you know this is the place where it's the Mecca right and I always mention to people when I'm out and about say hey I'm in Venice training all the time and people that don't know they say oh you train at Muscle Beach and you train outdoors <laughs> and I'm like no no it's just uh, it's just a place where you know it's off the beach and it's the Mecca of bodybuilding where you know Muscle Beach as you see, they're doing uh, reconstruction on Muscle Beach now so there's not even anything to really see, which I'm trying to come down here for the unveiling of the new equipment and all that. Uh, so I know that we're working on that, but you know, I was able to live on this 
boardwalk and I used to watch the bikes ride by every day and I used to be actually riding the bike. Um, I would ride at 10 speed to the gym every day. How did you and, uh, fit on a 10 speed? I, man, you know, the tires, I think I bent the rims actually because I think sure. I was like 270 even at I'm that sure time. You did. Yeah. But I can't tell you guys like the pro progression I made moving from the East Coast, which I felt like I was surrounded by a little more negativity than what I, I would have liked, to becoming um, very successful living out in California and able to compete at the highest level. And, you know, I didn't do as well at that first Olympia. Very unexpected to finish almost dead last, second to last. But I found a groove and I had a couple different gyms to train at and I, I always had one of those like work ethics where I felt I could outwork anyone and I started training at that World Gym and in Lake Forest and then I was training at that Gold's Gym in Chibuco Canyon and I worked linked up and just, you know, met a lot of nice, good people that still remain my friends nowadays. Um, but I had to step outside my comfort zone and that's kind of the moral of this whole video is like, I left my family behind and no one left in my family ever. You know, I'm the youngest of seven kids. And I remember being super nervous about that, but I really wanted to build my career and, and really pursue what I wanted to do. And I think, you know, we talk about doing the same thing over and over and over and you're gonna have the same result, right? But I knew that I had to get out of Massachusetts to really propel my career. And sometimes you're scared. Sometimes, you know, you know, you don't know what the circumstance is and, and granted I was going to get a raise to move out there Like it was totally shocked to me when I went from you know when I was leaving I remember I was renting a place for $400 a month to paying $1,400 a month for a one-bedroom apartment And I was like man, how am I ever gonna get ahead as much money as I would continue to make? It was like, you know, I felt like the overhead was a lot more you know, everything's a little more expensive in California, price of gas, and, you know, the food was more expensive. I wasn't working with my butcher that I had. I had, like, a real butcher, <laughs> like, a slaughterhouse back in Massachusetts. I'd buy, like, the whole cow at a time. I mentioned that. Um, if you guys, you know, probably some of the new viewers don't know, I used to buy a whole cow. I would buy everything, and I would say, grind this to hamburg, cut this to steaks, and I'd have freezers in my house, and I'd freeze all I'd buy 140 pounds of chicken at a time. So here I am going to Stater Brothers and going to Vaughn's, which are new supermarkets I've never heard of, buying my meat for the first time. And I, I still to this day, I mean, grocery store meat is not the best thing. Fortunately, today I have a meal service like Trifecta that sends me all organic meat, unlimited. Uh, I'm actually a shareholder in that company. So people, a lot of people have been asking me, you know, I was with a former uh, meal prep company and now I have stock in ownership in the new company trifecta food so you know it's just i'm very blessed to be able to do that but that's really what it took for me to get above and beyond is you know i had to step out my outside my comfort zone and go into these new gyms and i was scared as hell i'll be honest like i wasn't sure if i was going to make it and you hear all these people going out west and they come back because they're homesick and i watched a lot of people do it even after me like moved out there and then they were gone um eventually i migrated to vegas uh, but I still, my heart is in California, and, and you and I talk about this all the time. Ideally, this is where I would love to be, although I hate the traffic, especially today, the traffic was bad coming to the gym. Uh, but I love just this weather, and we talk about it. You you, you tease me a little bit, because you you always tell me, oh man, it's so nice at Gold's today. I drove down on the bike, and you drive almost an hour on the bike every yeah. day. And uh, you know, unfortunately today, you ran into some almost accident over there, which is scary I got lucky today. Yeah. yeah, so. Uh, but you see, this is a Sunday. Look at all this. Look at what's going on. I mean, see all the bikes going behind me, and these are all tourists. And we went to the gym today, and people are coming up left and right. But yeah, California is like the place that everyone wants to visit. Every foreign person is like, oh, I'm going to go and, yeah. and visit, you know, Venice Beach. And they save a whole entire year to come here on vacation. For yeah, a few weeks. And, and here we are living it every day. I did a video, and I did it in front of the pier some time ago, and I know people really like that. So I think this was kind of good to come down here and talk about it. But you have to step outside your comfort zone to do things. I mean, even when I was winning and becoming Mr. Olympia, I tried to figure out, okay, what can I do better to better myself? Because I wanted a better result. I'm an overachiever. I'm someone that no matter what I ever achieved, if you said, Jay, you know, is it enough? It's never enough for me. And that's that's a good and a bad thing. And I think I was taught that through my dad. He, was, he taught me never to be satisfied. I was getting up and working in the family business and we wanted to be the best at what we did, but we wanted to make people happy and we wanted to make our family name proud. And 
you know, I think that's how I approached bodybuilding was the same way is like, man, I just want to achieve and achieve and achieve. And you say, if you, people ask me today, like, I hate the question of like, where do you see yourself in five years? Or where do you see yourself in 10 years? I'm like, man, I'm still going to be killing it. Like I walk <laughs> around, I mean, we just talked about coming down here and people are like, hey, you know, come on the surfboard, Mr. You know, and the guy, the parking attendant is looking at me like, man, it's the big bodybuilder. And I feel like I'm not even really that big anymore, but I still walk in Gold's Gym Venice and it's like, people still want to come up and like man you look so good and and it's like with such little effort I think about how hard I used to have to work and I watch you how you continue to train and like your dedication and here I am I'm just like you know on a plane and I'm eating two meals and this morning I wake up I have one meal and then I go train like on two hours, hours two hours of sleep yeah. yeah and I'm just I'm so motivated I mean I to told you I always need my Venice fix right but I'm once again outside my comfort zone of Las Vegas coming and stepping out and this is kind of like a little vacation for me but there's always business I mean I, I I just arrived here a few hours ago and this is my business this is you know getting on YouTube and letting the fans and supporting the fans out there I was meet and greet yesterday amazing I was just in Ohio yesterday and here I am like and I didn't really, dude, I didn't want to get on a plane after get landing at midnight and get on oh. a plane at 6 in the morning. I'm sure you were like, dude, is he really going to do that? I know. You landed what? 10 o'clock last night? I landed at 10. I got home at 11 because I had to go to actually go to my office and sign items. Oh. I had to sign stuff that I had missed like two days that Larry had left. And so I had to go to the office and I called, I called Angie and I'm like, hey, uh, I have to go to the office. She's like, Jay, are you kidding me? I said, Angie, it's business. You know, I mean, I, I have my certain things I need to do. And, uh, and I went home and I literally said, oh, you know what, I'm gonna pack, I'm gonna w wake up at three. So I woke up at three and I packed until four, we left at 4.30. Wow. Um, didn't even cook breakfast because I had eat like a meal before when I got home and and here I am. I mean, I had a good breakfast this morning, but we just had a good meal at Firehouse. And and uh, you know, tonight I'm gonna try to do some fun activity stuff, step out of my realm a little bit, and really enjoy myself and refresh myself a little bit. Maybe you can do some vlogging while you're in Orange County. Some yeah, vlogs. I should do some stuff at the fair. Yeah. Maybe we can add it to this video. Yeah, or, or just even separate, you know, Orange yeah. County's days or whatever. Yeah, okay. Do what you can. I'll yeah, so, there, but, yeah, so listen, you know, you guys, I'd love you guys to hear your comments on, like, your scenarios, how you had to step outside your comfort zone to make some changes positively in your life and, you know, and who you had around you for support. And at the time, I, you know, I, my family was, I wasn't super close to my family and I had left. But I had a lot of good people around me that were supportive, and it's always good to have that. So surround yourself with positive people, but don't be afraid to step outside that comfort zone sometimes, man. And I was like, listen, I moved out here. I wasn't a great bodybuilder. I was second to last in the Mr. Olympia. Like, I thought I was going to be great, and then within two years, I was almost winning the damn thing. So it shows you how fast it can turn around. So we watch these people go into these shows, and we have high expectations for a lot of people, and then we, we're disappointed when they don't do as well, right? Or that when they do great, we're like, well, yeah, man, we knew they'd do great. And, uh, you know, it's, it's as we approach the Olympia, every year I kind of get that feeling. And you were with me for a lot of those. I mean, you remember what we went through. So, you know, we'll see how this year unrolls and we'll see how uh, who's the who the new champ's going to be. Because it will be a new champ, which is kind of exciting. And uh, we'll be there to document it. So. Yeah, man. So let's uh let's keep going guys. Let, let me see your comments below on what you guys think. Uh what if what are some of your outside obstacles that you overcame to step out of your zone and really be your absolute best? Let me know. Okay. Check it out. How about how we meet here? Is this what I see you riding in All the, the time. Insta story? Yeah. The fat the fat Dude, you gotta get one. You fat scooter. They're both mine. I got some expensive <laughs> coming by. Next time you're around, let me know. Do they sponsor you with this thing or no? Uh, they actually hooked me up with this one at cost because I did a fun um, giveaway with them. We nice. did a fun program and then we did a giveaway with them. Sweet. What do they run these things around? I think right around here from 25 to 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 000, yeah. And how long does the charge last? Yeah, 50 miles. Wow. A long time, yeah. And how fast does it go? 20. It's like dope. It? It's nice. It's actually, I think it fucks around a little bit sometimes. That was a little touchy. Yeah, yeah, it's like... Uh, so what do you guys do? Just take you ride on this thing? Or yeah. They let you ride on it? Yeah. yeah. You sure? Yeah. I, I take it all the time. They say, yeah, I usually take this and this is the one I take step on because it rides double. So, yeah. He just says, don't you know who I am? I'm the quad god. And he said, okay, <laughs> just go. <laughs> who said that? I'm just kidding. <laughs> he's not we, the choir god anymore. He's not? Right now. Oh. He's the vegan god. <laughs> no, he's the vegan god. Yeah, that's you know, where I learned about it from. I eat predominantly plant-based, okay. but he's a true 